Hello and welcome to a new episode of Carloop TV. In this hotly anticipated video, and for the people that follow this channel regularly, we are going to attempt to fix the cowbell sound, which comes from the drivetrain on my M3. This is a very common BMW issue I've learned. I've done a video previously demonstrating the sound. Here it is. Since that video aired, many, many people have asked, have I fixed it yet? BMW themselves don't guarantee a fix when you take it into them. They call it an acceptable drivetrain sound. We've already taken the car apart and re-greased the splines on the UJ, and that didn't fix it. Well, after much research and talking to other owners on the forums, in this video, we will attempt to finally fix it by changing the prop shaft CV joint. Watch until the end to see if we succeed. You can never have enough lube, can you? It has been said. Right. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a new episode, a new exciting episode of Car Lube. Today is the day I'm with Malcolm from Mega Dodo and we're going to fit the problematic CV joint so we can stop all the horrible tinking, clicking sounds and uh, I will show you the progress. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Need it. <laughs> yeah. So we've got to take off the exhaust in the, the back and the centre section. Yes. Uh, the heat shields. The heat shield to allow us access to drop the middle of the prop. That means we can disconnect the prop CV joint at the diff. Yep. And then we've got all the supporting uh, bracing under the car, which. Yeah. That. Stiffer, these things make the chassis. Yeah. You'll feel it if you left these off. Plus, it's the gearbox, um, heat gearbox, shield. gearbox, heat shield, and noise suppressor. Right. It's quite a big part. Yes. They are nicely put together, these. I do like the engineering. the more awkward ones first. So it's probably taken us about an hour to get to this point so far, isn't it? Yeah. Which Removing is... all the heat shields and the exhaust and the gearbox shield. And... Yes. This would have been a lot quicker on a ramp, proper ramp, where you've got the access. This side's moving, but I have to sort of get it out evenly. It's just, see that side is definitely moving. Problem is, that'll then skew if it in. There we go. So Lovely. Now, allow me to flex that down to get that off. There we go. And now can tell me that bit on the end there is what we believe, what we've researched. It or, is indeed, yeah. yeah. So it's constant velocity joint, um, and you've got several balls inside there, all well greased, running inside two cages to allow that sort of movement. Yeah. But I have it's rocking in that position. Yeah. But actually, I can feel it. That feel loose. It's it's 
it's stiff there. Yeah. If I pull harder, <laughs> you can hear that. Yeah. Click. So that tells me the ball joint isn't in good condition, and hopefully that's what's causing it to to clunk. I can always hear the noise that it makes. Yeah. I mean that that tinging noise you get is the prop shaft literally ringing like a bell. Yeah. And it's as that's winding and unwinding as you put it in gear. So fingers crossed we are getting where we need to be. So that thing in the palm of your hands, we've got all the replacement parts. Yes. To, to put a new one on. To put a new one on. And hopefully inside there, there'll be a circlip that we can pop off and then this whole joint should slide down the shaft. I've got one of those. We've got a replacement circlip as well. Yeah, good. That needs pinging off. This is like a, a one-time use Jubilee clip. I don't have one of those, I don't think. And so I shall re remove it with great care then. <laughs> that one type. Did you reuse it last time? Because we wouldn't have had No, we, we didn't time. take that off. Oh, okay. We didn't need to take off. What we did is we pulled this. Oh, yeah, we took this off because we, we, we greased the splines. Yeah. So the shaft goes on splines into the diff. Yeah. And there was a bulletin, which is why that was my initial diagnosis, is we we fix what the, the bulletin says. So that cape, that cap, we've got a new one of those as yes, well. Yes, we have, yeah. That box of tricks cost me about £250. Ouch. And all it is is, what, one, two, three, four, five, six great big ball bearings yeah. in two metal cages. Well, sometimes there's some benefits to being a member of M3 Cutters. Yeah. Because uh, Cotswold's BMW did me a terrific deal. I mean, it, it, it should have been more than £250 is what I'm saying for all yeah. the parts. There we go. Hmm. So nice thick grease. Somewhere on that shaft should be circlip. Circlip, there it is. Yeah, that's definitely got a rough feel to it. Well, when it's uh, off, we compare. We can compare to both. Top. Exactly. There's the circlip. We do have a new one of those. Yeah. So I can be brutal if I need to. Hopefully, it'll just hook out. Yeah, one CV joint off. Lovely. But any sort of wear in any of those balls, see there, it's not, it's reluctant to snap back round now. Right, so the perhaps the balls are not as spherical as they used to be. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If there's one, that, one that's got a slight bit of wear on it or something like that, then that's causing a, a rough spot. These ball bearings are brand new. Yeah mark on them. We just need to pack them with grease. Yeah, I didn't want to touch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't really matter if it falls either. No, that's not that's true. But it might damage my pristine <laughs> van. <laughs> right, okay. So we just need to repack that yeah, now. This is BMW CV joint grease. Okay. <coughs> So we're literally going to squeeze it in to all the balls. And this is the right quantity for ACV joints, so you put it all in. Right. It's very high temperature, capable grease. How, how, how can you actually get it all the way to the back of the ball uh, bearings? A couple, couple of turns of the shaft and it'll work its way around. Right. Right. If you look at it, you just it's so fluid, I've managed to get most of it round the back. You might as well just finish it all off oh, yeah, in there. Oh yeah, definitely. Just the cap that goes over that, the yeah. one I prized off, no, it just literally sits in there because as you clamp the joint together, it'll be pushed together and captured in there. Okay. I think this is dealing with over 400 brake horsepower. It's all going through this joint. Yeah. And you've got six ball bearings, but actually only a couple of those parts of it are handling the power at any one time. So it's not surprising that they do fail. So um, just to um, let everyone know, 
the car, this joint has been on the car for now. My car's got 50, 54 and a half thousand miles on it. So this part may fail every 50,000 miles for all that we know. It does seem to be, if this fixes it, it, it is obviously a, a weak spot on the car. I, I, I need you to be more positive than that, Malcolm. But when it fixes it, yes, it indeed. confirms that it's a weak spot on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I must, do apologise. We must reiterate at this point that we all have our fingers crossed, um, but hopefully everyone will be happy by the end when I drive out of this garage and there's no sound. Grease on the rubber. You can never have enough lube, can you? It has been said. I suppose you've got to be really careful with that in case any balls come out. Would they come out? Uh, no, they should be locked in. The, the, the metal cage that they sit in should not come out in theory. Managed to get onto there. Making sure it's a nice fit on those splines. There we go, there's the groove. So we've got the groove just showing now. So hopefully I can sing that, that on. Clip on. Let's just give it a... Yeah, I can feel it now plonking rather than moving. So it must be at the edge of its travel. So that's what the spring clip looks like. Literally okay. springs over the shaft and sits in the groove says with great confidence. Like that. In we go. So now clean that mating surface so the new cover can go on. So we're replacing that with a brand new one, mainly because the cork, once it's been compressed, won't work again. Just a case of putting all the bolts back in again. Yep. And uh, basically putting the car back together. Exactly.
Obviously, I was fairly disappointed that all this work had been done and didn't yield the results I wanted. Since filming this video last year, I have done a bit more research and have a couple more ideas of steps I'm going to take to try and silence this prop shaft. This is a very common MCAR problem and some people have successfully fixed it with the methods I've already tried, whereas I've subsequently learnt others have had great results by replacing the centre support bearing. Alternatively, local to my mechanic is a prop shaft refurbisher, so this could be another option. Thank you for watching, please like this video in a sympathetic way and consider subscribing if you feel my pain. I will make another video once this issue is fixed, detailing what I did. In this episode we've got quite an interesting touring car inspired E36 BMW M3. I'm going to install these new headlights onto the front of my M3. I have fancied a change from the dimly illuminated OEM halos, which as you will see in this video struggle to distribute light evenly.